Hello and welcome to Mental Health, how to use your values to set boundaries. So this video is really about boundaries, but we're also going to explore values because boundaries exist to protect your values. They're not there for any other reason. Sometimes we think of them as something like, I don't know, as a way to like harm somebody else or teach somebody else a lesson. It's not about that at all. It's about how do we protect what we in our heart of hearts know and believe that we need in terms of our relationships or in terms of our respect or in terms of our lives. That's what boundaries are about, protecting the quality of our life. And that's why boundaries exist if you slot it into the mental health spectrum under self-care. To really understand boundaries, you kind of have to understand what you're trying to protect, aka your values. So if you're interested in that, stick around and watch this video. Hi, my name is Jesse. Welcome to the channel Open Source Owners, where we talk about what if humans had an owner's manual? Well, definitely boundaries and values would be in such an owner's manual. Come on in, let's check it out. Okay, you can see here, set about first defining your values. Here are some example values. Honesty, ethical, fun, playful, connection with nature, joyful, spiritual, kind, compassionate, caring, loving, truthful. Now, if you'd like to take a moment to fill out this journal prompt, this would be one way to start to explore your own values, especially if you're like, well, I don't know what my core values are. I've not really done that sort of work, which by the way, we don't really do that in school, do we? It's not like we have courses on values or ethics or morals anymore, I believe we used to. But so maybe this is the first time doing this, so you might wanna pause the video and actually take some minutes on this journal prompt. Let's read the journal prompt here. What are my core values and am I living by them? How can I align better with my core values? One way to help with this, if you're like, I don't know, Jesse, are you kidding me? What are my core values? Is to determine your self-care superhero and sort of borrow or extrapolate their values. Now, a self-care superhero is sort of the idea of somebody that you look up to that you think is the bee's knees, as the kids say or used to say. Um, it could be like Yoda. It could be like Beyonce. It could be fictional. It could be real individual. It could be your grandfather. It doesn't matter. Somebody that you really look up to. For a lot of people, it's someone like Jesus or Buddha. For a lot of people, it's more like Oprah or Beyonce or Mr. Rogers or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Pick somebody that you've always admired and looked up to and then try to extrapolate their values. What are they sort of demonstrating to the world? Why is it that you're so attracted to them and you think the world of them? Well, it probably has to do with an ethical or a values-based approach to who they are. They seem consistent. They seem kind. They seem compassionate. They seem like they protect their children. Whatever the case may be, one way into understanding your core values is to think about someone that you really look up to. I'm calling them a self-care superhero and extrapolate their values. As you see here, how do they behave? How do they deal with adversity? How do they care for others? Okay, so let's look at some example boundaries. The key is you want to first be clear about your values. Maybe just pick one value for now. I want to pick fun just for the heck of it, right? So my value is fun. I, I want to be around people who are engaged in fun. I want to have fun in life. I feel as an adult that you know, as children, it was very easy to have fun. As adult, it's harder. So what I'd like to do is protect my desire and my sort of need to have fun so that life doesn't feel like drudgery all the time, right? Okay, so we're just playing with this as an example. Now use that value and now let's look at some example boundaries to see how it might sort of play into protecting our fun. Okay, we're gonna read through all these. So first example of type of boundaries is saying no. So, you know, there's many ways to do this, saying no thank you, or no, I am busy, or no, I can't do that right now, or no, I can't perform that duty, but maybe I can hook you up with somebody who can, etc. Learning to say no is one of the most critical boundaries to protect your values for, again, we're using fun as an example. So are there examples of people who are inviting you somewhere or a work invitation that will actually decrease your quality of life, decrease your quality and threshold for fun, that's where you might wanna to learn to say no. Boundaries with others. I will only see them, whoever it is, mom, dad, brother, sister, boss, whoever, for one to two hours at a time. Or I will not answer their call after 9 p.m. Or I will never be alone with my pervy uncle, etc. So understanding the people in your life that take a little bit from you or have hurt you before, but you still wanna have relationships, well then the boundary is for you to protect yourself. They don't have to know about it. In fact, if you told them, they would probably react poorly. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried that, but if you say to somebody, hey, you're so toxic to me that I set a boundary so I don't have to deal with you as much, um, no one's going to respond well to that. It's not about telling the other person. You know, sometimes it will be with your children or with your partners. You may need to tell the other person. 
but with workers or friends or acquaintances, you don't have to tell them at all. In fact, it's only going to make things worse. Let's keep going. With media, only one hour of TV news per day. I will only check social media two times per day, once in the morning and once after dinner for a total of 20 minutes. I will delete my social media account because I know it causes me to feel anger or fear, etc. Could be you watch a lot of Fox News or CNN News or something like that. And you notice that your heart rate goes up or you feel more demoralized or it depletes your level of joy and fun ultimately because that's not really fun to look at news that you have no control over. So setting limits and setting boundaries around media can help protect your core values. In this case, we're using the example of fun. With yourself, I will not share my mental health struggles with my kids, except at critical moments. Um, the key here is to protect your children from your own mental health struggles. They don't need to know that mommy is depressed every day. Um, they don't need to know that daddy is suicidal or has alcohol issues. Um, they need to be protected. And when the times are right, you know, maybe in the therapy session or something, you can talk to your kids about it. You can open up to them and share, but you want to also protect them. This book, The Keys to Unlocking Depression, is a fantastic book by Michael Yapkow. The link will be in the description below. This book is really good, though, at helping you understand how and why you need to protect your children from your own mental health struggles. Keeping going here, I will not talk to myself with cruel words because that ruins my fun in this case. I will only talk about my mental health struggles with my partner some number of times uh, per day. Again, you need to protect your partner if they don't struggle with mental health issues and you do. It, you know, the whole of your relationship should not be based around your mental health struggles. You're working on that. That's a part of you. It's an important part of you. And, and they need to know that. But it should not define every aspect of your relationship. That's a recipe for sort of hollowing out a relationship, causing resentment, etc. I will make space for play and fun every day, even if I do not feel like it. So that's like a saying yes boundary where it's like, hey, some things we have to say no to, but other things we have to say yes to and invite in, especially if fun is a core value, we have to actually make fun happen, right? It doesn't just always spontaneously happen. Let's keep going. With food and drink, I will only drink blank amount of caffeine because it ruins my sleep if I do more, or I will not drink soda or sugary foods and instead drink, you know, chamomile tea. I will avoid eating blank because it makes me feel bad. Maybe it's uh, every morning I have a bagel and I don't like that. Um, I will stop eating at blank so it doesn't affect my sleep. So it could be about alcohol, it could be about drugs, it could be about food, but basically understanding what makes your self-care really thrive and what actually depletes it slowly but surely. This is not about demonizing types of food. This is not about saying I can never have X, Y, or Z. I don't think we have to get that staunch about it, though sometimes we can. Um, but this is about just sort of protecting like, hey, I know when I drink three glasses of wine, it affects me negatively. But if I stop at two, I'm fine. It's more about that. OK, so with values and boundaries, I have some questions for you. I'm curious if you've tried to set boundaries and values before and how it went. So let's read these questions really quick. I'm curious what you think. And this is about leaving comments in the comment section below, uh, just so I get a sense of what people are actually going through out there. Uh, what boundaries are you currently working on? I would love to know that to the degree that you feel comfortable sharing. What boundaries are you currently working on? That will inspire other people who read it to also be working on their own boundaries. And that's kind of the goal here that we can build each other up. We can support each other. Have you had any positive examples of setting boundaries with others? And then on the other hand, has setting boundaries ever not worked for you and how so? So give us some examples, again, to the degree that you're comfortable sharing like personal and private details, but like when has boundary setting went well, whether you told somebody about it and they respected it or whether it was an internal protection mechanism and uh, it worked for you, or alternatively, when has it ever went poorly? Um, maybe you told your partner that you're gonna try to set a boundary and they reacted very angrily or they shut down and gave you the cold shoulder, whatever it may be, I'm sure you're not alone. So please share in the comment section below. We would all love to read that. And maybe if you're struggling at all with mental health or boundary setting, or you just want a little bit of a community or partnership, then consider my mentorship program, the Home Mentorship Program. You can read here what it's all about. It's a fairly affordable program to basically help people in their mental health journey without necessarily having to get full on therapy, though that may be important and that may be something that you need eventually or in concurrence with a mentorship program. But this is more about just sort of having weekly and daily sort of reminders and goal setting and a community that helps build each other up and support each other in our mental health journeys. And here are some free eBooks that I wrote, both this and the mentorship program. If you just click the links below, you could find out more information about either of them or you could just get these free PDFs if you're interested in that. 
And that was mental health, how to use values to set boundaries, super critical. I would love to hear from you in the comment section. And thank you so much for watching the video all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. It helps the almighty algorithm. So that's always helpful. Thank you, everybody. And I will see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves out there. Bye-bye.